Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Shall we pray together? Our Father and our God, we thank you for once again you have brought us onto this program whereby we listen into your word and allow you to direct our lives. Lord, we thank you for all those that are listening to us yet once more. We ask that your word will come forth unto them, that your word, your living oracles, will reach every one of us as we listen and cause this word to mix with faith within us to do us good and to cause us to advance on our pilgrimage towards eternity thank you jehovah god for hearing us we know you will do beyond what we could ask or imagine according to your riches and glory and according to your wisdom even as we have prayed in jesus name amen I want to thank God for every one of you who again has found time to tune to Living Seed today. We praise God for uh, the last edition of this program while we dealt with prerequisites for divine blessings. That is steps that God expects you to take in order for heavens to open towards you and for God to open his hands upon your life for a specific blessing even from above i want to remind you today that the bible says all good things all perfect gifts come from above from the lord who made the heavens and the earth with whom there is no variableness and there is no shadow of turning i like to say to you that all blessings according to james and chapter one I want us to quickly look at James chapter 1 before uh, we continue. James chapter 1 verse 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. So again, I have this assurance uh, to share with you this hour that all good gifts, every perfect gift comes from above. And not from abroad, but from above. From the Father of all spirits, from Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither any shadow of turning. And because all blessings all perfect gift comes from the Lord. There is need to learn how to receive from the Lord. How to allow our blessings to come from above. Now one thing I'm noting in that scripture before I leave it, even now, is the fact that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. There are many things you think you can receive from the environment. There are many things you think you can receive from human beings. But they are not perfect gifts. They are not gifts that can last. They are not things that can satisfy your life. But all gifts, every good gift, anything good that you are looking for, anything perfect that will give you rest, just like the book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 says, The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. It adds no sorrow to it. Therefore, you see, if God must bless you, if God must release his own gift unto your life 
uh, I don't think anything can be too much for us to learn what are God's prerequisites for divine blessings upon our lives. So as I go on today, looking at prerequisites for divine blessing, I want you to listen very carefully and be praying along that God will show unto you the key that will bring the blessings of God into your life, even in the name of Jesus. Again, I'd like to illustrate this message from the book of John chapter 6. I'd like you to quickly turn your Bibles to John chapter 6. And I'd like to read from verse 2. Verse 2 very quickly. I hope I'll be able to get to verse 12 before we stop today. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were deceased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes, and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread, that this may eat? And this is said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here which has five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number above 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples. And the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain that nothing be lost. May God bless his word to our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Now here we have a popular story. The story of how Jesus Christ fed 5,000 people and above. But what I want us to consider tonight and uh, right now is not the issue of uh, how he fed the 5,000 but I want you to see some simple prerequisites that led to that blessing. That if you also will apply to your life, it could open the hand of God towards you today. Now, the first background to that story is what you notice in verse 2, verse 3, and verse 5. Now, the Bible said, a great multitude followed Jesus because they saw his miracles, which he did on them, that were deceased. And Jesus went up into a mountain and there he sat with his disciples. Verse 5. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that this may eat? I'd like to draw your attention to something there before I go ahead. Now, I want you to note something. That the Bible says, when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him. Now, that is the first key. Whenever people come to Jesus, whenever you decide in your heart that this is your life, you are not going to carry it up and down again. You are not going to run elder scatter again. You are not going to keep looking here and there. Who will help you? Who will provide for your life? Who will solve that particular problem in your life? As soon as you decide that you are coming to Jesus, even ever before you make your request known, the Lord has already known. Look, the Bible said, Jesus lifted up his eyes and he saw a great company come to him. This company have not even started talking yet. They have not started even praying. But the fact that they started coming and they chose to come towards Jesus, 
They chose to tune their heart and say, we will go to this man, Jesus. He already lifted up his eyes to see them. And I'd like to say to you tonight that the Lord Jesus, he is quite sensitive to every heart that is turned towards him. At the moment at which you decide in your heart, and you make up your mind that now, it is to the Lord Jesus I'm going to go. It is to the Lord Jesus I'm going to turn my life. It is to the Lord Jesus I'm going to uh, present my case. He begins to expect you. And he begins to make preparation on how to meet that particular need in your life. He begins to arrange how he is going to intervene in that situation. And how he is going to help you. Now I want you to note what the master was doing in verse 5. He was on the mountain with his disciples. And Philip was very close by. So look at Jesus. Listening with Philip concerning the situation of the multitude that are yet to come to him. Look at how Jesus, right on the mount, where you think he's not thinking about you, and that he's not talking about your situation, how he called Philip aside. And he said to Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that this may eat? Now, that's the first thing I want to present to you, that the Lord, ever before you come to him, he has a plan for you. The book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, I alone know the plans that I think towards you, says the Lord. Plans for prosperity and not for disaster. Now for every man who is thinking and who is taking a decision, I will no longer run to the abalist. I no longer run to these white garment churches. I no longer run to these men that are deceiving me. I no longer run to the occult. I will go to Jesus. And once you make up your mind with all your heart, wherever you are, ever before you come, Baba is already planning for you. Baba is already planning and thinking something good how to alleviate that trouble, that problem, that, that, that entanglement of your life. He has a plan. You may not know about that plan. You may not overhear what God is thinking towards you. There seems to be a shield or a curtain that cuts your eyes and your ears from hearing the eternal plans of God concerning your life. Sometimes I see you running up and down and panicking as if God has forgotten you. As if God does not care about your situation. As if God is not thinking about you. No, I want to tell you, even though problems may seem to hide his face, even though storms of life may be on the high tide concerning your life, even though all the troubles may be making so much noise everywhere around you that you are not quiet enough as to see or hear what God is doing. All that notwithstanding, Baba is thinking concerning you. Baba is planning something good, something great, something wonderful concerning you. And he asks Philip, Philip, when shall we buy bread that this may eat? But look at what the Bible said in verse 6. Those of you that are having your Bible, please open it and come along with me. And this is said to prove him. For he himself, he knew what he would do. Hallelujah. There are times that he looks as if God seems to be confused about your situation. No, he is not. Sometimes he's only waiting to see your reaction. He's only waiting to see all the calculations you are going to bother your heart with. And the Lord asks Mr. Philip, where are we going to get bread to feed this multitude that are coming? When Jesus was asking that, it was not that he didn't know what to do. He knew what he would do. He knew how he's going to bring that problem out. He knew how he's going to solve it. He knew where he's going to get his provision. And that is one encouragement I have from the Lord for you today. That actually, 
the things around your life may be looking complex. The situation around you may look hopeless. And you might be imagining, is there a way out? Yes, the Lord knew what he was going to do. And ever before you start talking about it, you knew what to do. Ever before you begin to mobilize people to pray or to preach the word of God to you concerning his provision, concerning his healing, concerning his deliverance, concerning his salvation for your life, you already knew what he will do. Even as we are hearing this message now, God already knows how and what he was going to do to bring your life out onto limelight and to release you from all the troubles you are going through right now once you decided to come unto him the unfortunate thing is that you may be listening to me here now and you have not personally decided to come to jesus you keep thinking that there are other ways that you will try to solve your problem or to bring your life to a point of rest you might be imagining that maybe you will try another man you will try another woman you will try another theory you will try another opening apart from the lord jesus some of you may be listening to me here and say what is this man say have i not gone to prayer houses and now have i not taken my bar by the riverside have i not gone to the bar beach many times have i not lighting so many candles sorry brother i'm not talking of candles i'm not talking of bathing by the riverside i'm not talking of going to men that are deceiving you I'm not talking about people that are seeing visions for you all the time. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking that when a man decides to come to Jesus, as bad as he is, the Lord Jesus has a plan for your life. He knows what he was going to do. And right now as I'm talking, he knows what he will do concerning your life. As you are sitting down there, you might be wondering is there any way out for me i tell you there is a way if you can turn to jesus if you can decide right now where you are sitting and say okay i'm not going around again i will bring my life i will bring my situation i'll bring my circumstances i'll bring my family i'll bring my destiny unto jesus as soon as you decide to come he knows what he will do and he plans for your life now listen we are asked the lord jesus was just testing what philip would think can you imagine what philip started doing i don't know what was philip's profession before he became a disciple i don't know whether he was an accountant but i imagine here as soon as jesus said when can we buy bread for these people ah mr philip started to make a lot of budget I am sure that he just looked at the number of people coming. He must have imagined that this should be about, about uh, 6,000 or 7,000 people. And uh, the cost of one loaf of bread is so and so and so and so. And uh, if we were to, uh, if 10 people are to eat one loaf, which actually would just be a small, small bite, he concluded that eight months' wages, that is, if we collect salaries for eight months it will not be enough to buy enough bread so that each of these people should take a bite do you know what mr philip was saying mr philip look at the enormity of the problem he look at what what it will take to even give these people a small bite a small relief and he said look master if we should go and take employment now and we are collecting salary every month and government is paying regularly and we are not touching it and we are just heaping it in the bank for eight months it will not be enough to solve these people's problem even if to just give them a bite but do you know something jesus was not just planning to give the people a bite jesus was not planning just to give them a taste jesus was planning to solve that problem and to feed them and to feed them to be full until they will want no more and yet you see when you look at the problem when you look at the magnitude of your situation you might be able to you might begin to act like mr philip you might begin to analyze like philip you might begin to calculate like philip 
and some of you as you are listening to me maybe it is this same budgeting that is worrying your head maybe it is this calculation you cannot imagine how god is going to step into your problem but i must tell you right now that what is impossible to man is not impossible with god what looks difficult for you as a human being is not like that with god god doesn't struggle to carry out anything god has enough resources to solve every problem once he's ready to do it god is able to provide and to bring into existence those things that you need in your life to to make the will of god to come to pass in your life once you give god the chance to do it now then the other person that overheard them speaking mr andrew andrew came in and said excuse me there's a lad here which has five barley loaves and two small fishes but what are they among so many how will that solve the problem there are many times that god wants to bless you but you can't see how god is going to do it you can't see the way god is going to run to make it to happen there are some of you listening to me you are barren and god wants to bless you i say well you've gone to doctors uh, gy gy gynecologists they have said well your only don't finish your tubes are all together blocked or that your womb is too small you can never conceive now all those doesn't affect god's plan when he decides to walk now see what jesus decided to do and that's where i'm going right now the bible says jesus said unto his disciples make the men sit down and that is the prerequisite for receiving a divine blessing from god i want to share with you right now that god has a plan for your life god is already thinking concerning you you can imagine that the multitude were in the valley they were on the mountain jesus and his disciples and he was discussing with them concerning how to solve that particular problem now but what did jesus now say go and tell the people to do what to sit down listen if god must intervene in your life then you must agree to sit down to sit down upon the promise of the word of god to sit down on what god can do and stop running up and down the bible says a double-minded man cannot receive anything from god because he's unstable in his ways but when god decides to fight for you you must down your tools if you want god to provide for you you must stop all your personal arrangement if you want god to open a door for your life then all the petty petty doors you have been using koni koni keys to open for your life you need to drop them god can only step into your life when you are willing to sit down god can be struggling with your energies god can be struggling with your own personal intellect and so today jesus again is standing here and he's reasoning concerning how your life need how your salvation is going to be affected but the question is this he said we should inform you that you should sit down god wants you to sit down you've been running up and down you've run to different places but the solution to your life only can be found in the hand of jesus the need of your life can only be met as you sit down waiting for the salvation of the lord waiting for the deliverance of the lord you are listening to me today sin has continued to pull you up and down the devil all kind of dreams you've been dreaming in the night in the day will not allow you to rest you've been traveling up and down going from one group to another from one church to another from one program to another baba said tell them to do what to sit down now will you sit down today so that god can intervene your problem will you sit down from running around will you sit down as as i want to pray with you now and say jesus i'm not going again i'm not going around again i'm not running up and down again i want to sit down and see what you will do for me i want to wait i want to wait on you i want to wait for your salvation i want to wait for your deliverance i want to wait for your help i want to wait for your light i don't want to run around again 
The prerequisite I share with you this hour is that Baba said, sit down that I may help you. Stop all your plannings. Stop all your arrangements. Stop all your connections. Sit down and let God intervene for you. Call Jesus today and say, Lord, I'm coming to you. I'm coming for you to help my life. And invite Jesus into your life. Surrender to him. Stop using all those juju around your waist. Baba says, sit down. All the places you have been going, they can never help you. As we pray with you now, Jesus is standing. He's thinking about you. If only you can come to him. Ask him to, your, to come into your life. He will deliver you in the name of Jesus. Our Father, we want to thank you for this blessed time. You have invited us to come and sit down in you. Lord, there are several men who are running to you, O God, in their hearts. How we ask that today you will grant them grace to be settled in you and you will solve their problems as you forgive their sins. Thank you for doing this, for we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you had the prerequisite for divine blessings of your life? A decision to come to Jesus, not to another man, not even just a minister, nor just a church, but to Jesus. Come to Jesus today and sit down. Stop running here and there. Be settled in Jesus. He will bless you.